What is up, Stats Nerds? So today we are going to cover bivariate analysis in SPSS. So this is the demonstration for that. Um, and what we will cover today is phi, Kramer's V, gamma, uh, Spearman's row, and Pearson correlation. So the first couple of those, or the first three of those, will be conducted in uh, a table, cross tabs, and then the other two will be conducted in correlation. So let's jump into it and show you what, what we're doing here. So uh, our first analysis here is going to be a fee. And so as you remember, fee is a two by two table. And so I'm, let's say I'm, uh, give you a quick note on the data here, actually. So um, this is the 2018 general social survey data. Um, it's got literally hundreds, let's see here, over a thousand different variables to play with. So you've got a lot of, um, a lot of uh, data here. Another thing to note too, the measures here, um, GSS, or, or I, I believe it's NORC, um, is the ones who organize this data. They, this is, some of this is incorrect in the measure piece. So if you can see my cursor here, um, some of these are actually ordinal. So even though it says nominal, some of them are actually ordinal. So it's going to be up to you as the researcher to identify what variables are nominal, what variables are ordinal. All right. So uh, first, let's start off with a two by two table um, using, uh, using cross tabs and looking specifically at fee. And so I'm interested in, uh, let's say, the relationship between support for abortion, if a woman wants it for any reason, and uh, whether or not the respondent would help with emotional support, support for an abortion. Uh, and so I've already picked out those two variables. And what we'll do here is we'll go under Analyze, and we will go to uh, Table, or excuse me, Descriptive Statistics. Then over, head over to cross tabs. I'll just set that there for a second. And we'll click on cross tabs. So the, the cool thing about this is the way that the cross tabs work uh, is essentially we can do all three of our statistics um, within using the same function, right? So we can do our fee, we can do our Kramer's V, and we can do our gamma. And in fact, in SPSS, uh, I'll click on the statistics here, um, fee and Kramer's V is the same. It comes under the same option, right? So um, I'll pop this over here. So you can see here fee and Kramer's V. So um, we'll start from the top, right? So this variable here, um, abortion if a woman wants it, I've already selected that into my table. Um, so what you do there in this case is you find the variable, click it into row. In this case, it doesn't matter what's the row and what's the column. And then um, respondent would help uh, with emotional support if um, uh, for an abortion, right? So then we go to statistics and we will do our fee and our Kramer's V and we'll, we'll click continue. And then you can add additional things in the cells um, observed and uh, ex expected. Um, you can do the row columns and percentages. Um, sometimes I do total. It's really up to you the way that you wanna read the table. Um, so we can do percentages and columns and you can see what that looks like too. And so what I'll do here, what I tend to do is I paste, I like to paste my syntax, right? And, and so the reason I do that, and I'll show you, is because what it does here is it pastes it at the bottom, right? And so I'm just going to move this down so you're not confused here. So this is the syntax that I just ran, okay? And so if you or not just ran, but this is the, the analysis that I just did. Um, I, I didn't hit run though. So what you can do here is if you paste it, the nice thing about this is you can keep the same basic functions and then just change out the variables, right? So these are the variable names. And so you can change those out. All right. Um, and then here's our statistics, chi squared and phi. Uh, and then in the next one, we'll be running gamma. And so um, we'll add or we'll change phi to gamma, right? And remember, phi and Kramer's V is the same, uh, same function here, same command. So I'm going to highlight this 
and then I'll click our run button here. Yep. So I'll highlight this, click run, bang. And there's our table, right? So this is our chi-squared test. This tells us whether or not there is a significant relationship. Um, and then this gives us our um, strength of the relationship, right? So this is sort of a moderate um, relationship. And what I would do is I would go um, into the book or some other place and find where the different sort of rules of thumb uh, for strength of relationship is, right? And because these are nominal, it doesn't, there's no direction of the relationship necessarily, right? But what we can see here is um, generally, and this is why the percentages can be kind of nice, right? So in this table, right, on the top column, or excuse me, on the, on the columns, we have, would you help with emotional support for abortion? And then in the rows, we have abortion if a woman wants it for any reason. And so the nice thing about this is what we see is that um, people who said yes, they would support um, they they support uh, abortion if a woman wants it for any reason. Um, 95% of those, or excuse me, 96.8% of those people said yes, that they would help with emotional support. Right. So that's kind of the, the neat thing about this um, is it provides that those data. Um, so this the and it provides the raw numbers here as well. So that's kind of the nice thing about these tables. Right. You can get a good idea. Um, the part of the reason why I don't like a lot of the time doing these percentages is because it becomes pretty cluttered, as you can see. So um, sometimes I prefer to just run it without those. So if I take the cells out, um, I will do, I'll do total here and then I'll just run it again. See, and that's a little more reasonable. Ah, I misinterpreted that. It's 48% um, of people who said yes to support abortion would also um, help with emotional support. Again, that's why I don't necessarily like all of the data in there. So that's our uh, that's our fee, right? So running our data with fee. Now we're going to do the same thing with Kramer's V. Um, and so for Kramer's V, I've our, already um, selected my data that I would like. And so I'm just going to run it, right? And so in this one, uh, for Kramer's V, right, is what I'm interested in looking at the relationship between uh, whether the respondent has taken any college level science courses and if the respondent believe, believes science research is necessary and should be supported by the federal government. So um, we should run some frequencies here. Uh, I'm not going to go over that uh, and run our cross tabs. So I've already got everything set up here and I'm just going to run it. Right, but it's the same exact process, right? And so I'll run through that just real quick here. And I know I'm going a little bit fast. I don't want this video to take a half an hour. So if you need to pause it and go back, that's totally fine. Um, so same basic idea. These are not the variables we're using. We're using different variables, but you go into the statistics and instead of fee and Kramer's V, you can do gamma, right? Or some of these other ones, we, we don't really cover those, but some of these other ones as well. So, or excuse me, do, am I doing gamma? No, I'm doing uh, Kramer's V. So yeah, that's that there. So same basic thing. Um, but when we get to gamma, you'll be able to see that as well, which we will jump into now. And so the next one, right, and I'm not going to do necessarily interpretation here either. So I think um, this gives us our significance, our chi-squared significance. This also gives us our significance. And we can see that the relationship is looks kind of like weak to moderate. Um, but again, look at those interpretations for Kramer's V. The next one um, is going to be gamma. And so we'll do the same basic thing, right? And so for gamma, gamma includes, um, there, gamma includes ordinal variables, but it includes tables that are um, best for no longer, larger than five by five, right? And we have our frequencies here. And what I'm interested in is testing the relationship between uh, whether or not the respondent believes science research is necessary and should be supported by the government 
and the respondent's personal attitudes towards members of um, the following religious group, which was which is atheists, right? And so, um, same basic idea: change what was phi to gamma, and run the data. Okay. And we have on the rows here, we have um, support for science research, right? Strongly agree to strongly disagree. And then we have um, attitudes towards atheists, right? And that gives us a good, just shows us the relationship here. And we see that is it is a um, approximate significance is, is um, less than 0 0.001, which is significant, chi-squared shows us that. Um, and the gamma, the value here, um, I believe is about a moderate, low to moderate relationship. All right. Uh, now let's move on to the correlations, right? So we've done our three, um, our three uh, cross tabs relationships for bivariate analysis. Now we're going to jump into our um, correlational relationships using correlation, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to analyze. So we're going to go to correlation, correlate, and bivariate, okay? And I'm going to take these out. And so what I'm interested in is I'm not going to do Pearson because I'm going to do Spearman, okay? So Spearman, uh, if you recall, Spearman is, Spearman's row is best suited for continuous ordinal variables, right? So typically things that are created on a, on a maybe a larger Likert type scale. And it can test the relationship between, um, and what I'm interested in here is testing the relationship between con confidence in the U.S. Congress and respondents' income, right? Maybe my hypothesis is that people with greater income maybe um, have confidence in U.S. Congress. So what I can do is I can either find, I can find my variable here. So C-O-N, C-O-N-G is the variable name. I will go into my analysis. That's not the one I was going into, my analysis. So um, I can just start typing it in. Um, C-O-N, C-O-N-G, right? There's one variable. And then the other one that I'm interested in is C-O-N-R-I-N-C, okay? So C-O-N-R-I-N-C. And you can see here that gives us the variable type, right? This is an interval ratio variable. So I'm looking at the relationship between a continuous ordinal variable and an interval ratio type variable. I'm not going to worry about any of this stuff unless you want your means and standard deviations. Um, it's not going to do that for Spearman style. I don't worry about any of this stuff. Um, if you want the confidence intervals, that's great. Again, I like to paste, but I'm just going to not paste in this situation and click OK. And so you can see this is a non-parametric correlation because Spearman's row is a non-parametric non statistic. Um, and I've actually left the top part blank and only looked at the bottom part. Um, correlation tables are duplicative, so it kind of helps visually just to select the bottom part, the bottom half. Um, and so what this shows us is the correlation coefficient is 0 0.015, um, which is very low for correlation, and our significance is 0 0.702. So it's, it's not even close to... Um, coming to significance, coming close to significance here. So I would identify here that there is not a significant relationship between one's income and their support for Congress. Okay, and last but not least, and I know I'm jumping back and forth between syntax and um, point and click, but um, I'm interested in now these two variables. So I'm going to run a Pearson's correlation. And Pearson correlation is, is best suited for for when both variables are continuous, right? So meaning both variables are interval ratio variables. And so let's say I'm interested, I want to test the relationship between a respondent's income. Um, so we'll keep that con R-I-N-C and the respondent's occupation prestige score. Now this is a score that the GSS had created. Um, I think in 2010, it said, go into the code book and find that. Um, and that'll help you understand that. So let's go back to our output, go to analyze, go back to correlate. 
Um, and as again, as you noticed, you can tell I pasted it, but I want to show you the difference between um, Spearman's and um, Pearson. So we go to our bivariate, unclick Spearman, click Pearson, take that out. And the other variable that I was interested in was, um, oh, I messed that up, was um, prestige. And so I will, um, I'm, I need to change this in the correlation here. It's prestige. So um, PRI, PRIS, nope, CP. This is partly why I don't, especially for large data sets, this is kind of why I don't like to um, use the point and click method because I think it's prestige 10. Um, because the point and click method um, can get you messed up. So that's why I like syntax. So we'll, we'll keep the Pearson correlation. Everything else is going to stay the same and we'll run it, right? You can see it no longer says non-parametric. It just says correlation. Right. And so the nice thing about the correlation tables is it gives us our two um, little asterisks here and tells us whether that tells us whether or not the relationship is significant. Um, so this is telling us there is a significant and positive relationship between one's income and one's um, prestige score, one's job prestige score. Um, so as one goes up, the other one goes up as well, which makes sense. Right. Um, and so those are the, that's the way you run bimetric or excuse me, bivariate um, correlations and, and bivariate analyses within SPSS. Um, I hope this has been informative and uh, we'll see you next time.